Thank you for joining us here once again on the University of God. And in this podcast, we are talking about the character of Christ. Yes, as believers in Christ, we're here to embrace the lifestyle and the character of Jesus Christ because we're disciples of Jesus. And what is the lifestyle and character of Jesus Christ? Faith, humility, love, the list goes on and on. We can see it there in Galatians in the, the fruits of the Spirit. How as can we, as natural men and women who are striving to follow Christ, how can we embrace that lifestyle? Well, that's what we're going to go into today. And we can only do that when we receive the gift of righteousness, which is a gift from God. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in your heart, in my heart, that is what will help us develop a godly character. By the fruits of righteousness, we should be known that we are believers in Christ. And what are the fruits of righteousness? Well, these virtues were actually spoken about in depth by Jesus Christ on that famous mountain when he gave that sermon on the mount, which has actually become a blueprint for all believers all over the world today to live our life by. So we want to actually start this journey through the Beatitudes and we want you to come along with us. So thank you so much for joining us and we want to step right in. Thank you. Yeah, I said so. So we should go back to the roots. We say we are Christian. I'm a Christian. We are a Christian. Everybody say I'm a Christian. I mean, we identify ourselves with Jesus. Mm. If I identify myself with Christ, I should be the fruit of Christ. Hmm. The question is, remember what Paul said, Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5 verse 15. Yeah. And go to verse 17. Galatians 5 from verse 15. It's good in every circumstance of life to reset our mind, our belief in the light of God's word. A believer in Christ has no other alternative than the word of God. Hmm. God is not expecting us to speak but to say anything that is not in line with his word. Mm. If my word abide in you and you abide in my word, says Jesus, and that's our unity with him. We all know what the Bible says. You mentioned righteousness. When we are in Christ, what does it mean in Christ? Before we go further in the, in the, in the reading, it's like righteousness is like a tree. Mm. The scriptures say that uh, the, the right tree is Jesus, the tree of righteousness. And we, we have been grafted that's the uh, figurative language Paul used. We are being grafted, mm. adopted. So when the branch is intimately grafted to a tree, it no longer lives by itself. It's the life of the tree that's feeding, giving life to the branch. Remember that it's the branch that bears the fruit, not the roots, not the trunk. So the fruit that comes from that branch is not from the branch itself, but from the root itself, which is righteousness. So it means, as Jesus said, by the fig tree, and a good tree, a good tree bears good fruit. Right. The good fruit we are talking about are the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of Christ. The scripture says that Christ in us, in Colossians 1, from 18 to the end, that Christ in us is the hope of glory. And the scripture says in Romans, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Mm. What's the seal of righteousness? The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. So if I'm, if I'm perfect identification with Jesus, as you all said, mm. Romans chapter 8, verse 9 said, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Mm. This means the seal of righteousness is the Holy Spirit and His indwelling presence in our life. Who gives the Holy Spirit? God. Yes. He proceeds from the Father through Christ. John 6, 27 said, He has a seal. He's the one that put the seal. It is Jesus' faith in Him. So now the question is, the Bible gives us an instruction. We are going to listen to Galatians chapter 5. We take it one by one from verse 15. If you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Mm -hmm. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you. Walk 
in the spirit. We have said it that God wouldn't have asked anyone to walk in the spirit if God in his wisdom has not designed all of us to walk in the spirit. Mm. I mean, it is possible to walk in the spirit. God is our creator. He designed us. Spirit, soul, and body. Walk in the spirit so that you will not. So you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes. Why? For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Can't you see? There are two opposite ways. <laughs> if the flesh say fight, the spirit say peace. If the flesh say be angry, <laughs> the spirit will say peace. Mm. God's way are not our ways at all. And it's most times opposite to what we naturally want to do or naturally feel like. That's it's true. That's right. A Christian must choose to do what is right every day in the sight of Christ, mm. even though it is contrary what my flesh naturally wants to do. If I'm provoked, my flesh naturally wants to retaliate. It's normal. We have mm. emotions. We are human beings. But Paul said, walk in the spirit. It gives us a clear, a clear understanding where the victory is, mm. where the battlefield is, where solution is, in the spirit, not in the flesh. Mm. Continue. The verse 17 again. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Thank you. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the control of the flesh. Romans chapter 8, from verse 8 to 9. So means, no one can say no to unrighteousness without the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm. No one can say no to anger, no to this, without the help of the Holy Spirit. You can see, the Holy Spirit is the only means of growth mm. in our Christian character and life. Yeah, gr means? growing in more like Jesus. Absolutely. Mm. That's why we say human spirit fails to act right unless the Holy Spirit gives him strength. And that's what we are going to talk about today. Jesus say, you have been saying, tit for tat, eye for eye. Am I right? Mm. But I tell you, Love your enemy, pray for everybody. That's the law of Christ. Jesus' teaching was as controversial then as it is now because it went against the status quo of the day. It went against the natural tendencies. And that's exactly the teaching of Jesus that we follow as disciples of Christ. And that is what he even talked about in the Sermon on the Mount. Absolutely. Christ's wisdom seems to be contrary to our natural common sense. Mm. But it's the reality of God, the reality of the fruit of the Spirit. Mm. That's why Jesus, I remind everybody, Luke chapter 9, verse 23, what did he say? He wants to follow me. Let's take up his cross and deny himself. Take up your cross daily. Mm. <laughs> the battle we face every day is with our senses. Mm. The battle we face every day is with our emotions and feelings. Every day. That's why I said, carry your cross. How do I carry that cross? Father, give us today our daily bread. Mm. This is the word. We embrace God's word as an effective tool for change. Because it points to life. Mm. So Jesus said, carry your cross and... Follow me. Deny yourself. Deny. Ah, thank you very much. Let's talk about that. What is denial? Self-denial. Me... You choose to do the will of God as prompted by the Spirit, run mm. my own ways. Mm. And that's extremely difficult to the flesh. Mm. Self-denial means you don't pull God to your mind, to your own will, and you submit to the will of God. Jesus Christ never came to do his will. He came to do the Father's will. If through the beatitude we see clearly the essence of Christ's nature mm. and character, all sorts of things were said against him. But he never responded to that in the way they did. He never used those words. He mm. said, you don't know where I come from. You don't know where I go. 
in John 8, 23. He said, you are of this earth. I am not of this earth. He told them clearly. Mm. And his kingdom is not of this earth. Absolutely. He never came to fight the Romans or to overthrow the Roman rules. The zealots, they were fighting natural warfare. But Jesus never came to overthrow the Roman rules. Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God in the hearts of people. Mm. And that is actually the battlefield, and your heart. That's the greatest battle. He never saw the Romans occupy as enemy. His attitude towards Pilate, who was judging him, is clear. Mm. When Peter wanted to defend him, we, all, we said last time, he said, I'm here to do the will of my father to fulfill the scripture. So what we see human beings as weakness is strength before God, mm. opposite. What the flesh considers as strength, anger, retaliation, fight, is perfect weakness before God. Mm. But the disciples, many people before saw the cross as an act of defeat, which is a mighty act of victory because Jesus came to die not for himself, but for you and me, mm. to save us, to justify us, to redeem us, or to defeat the devil and give us a, a, eternal life. That's what he came for. Jesus, sorry? That's so interesting when you say that what we consider often as strength is seen as weakness in the eyes of God. Absolutely. You know, natural strength, anger, being forceful, all of this, you know, is actually opposite to the character that Jesus taught us. Um, yes, that's why we need to look at Jesus. Because we identify ourselves by Christ. The Bible says very well. I'm taking you to the, to the book uh, of Revelation, what the Bible says about Jesus. Revelation chapter, chapter 19. I will read from verse 11. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. Take note. In righteousness, Jesus judges. <laughs> in righteousness, Jesus makes war. What does this mean? When Jesus looked at somebody in the Bible, Jesus never judged what the person did in the action, but look at the heart of the person, the motivation behind that act. When he saw that those who crucified at the cross was completely ignorant of whom he really was, because it takes spiritual discernment to know who he was, he prayed for forgiveness. That's what he did. Wow. He doesn't judge the way man judges and condemn and reject. Jesus fights in righteousness. The Bible calls it the offensive and defensive weapons of righteousness. When you are faced with temptation of anger, the Holy Ghost empower you to have self-control. When you are faced with the temptation of lying, Holy Ghost will strengthen you to speak the truth. When we are strengthened in opposition, Holy Ghost gives you calmness and love to react diligently and to answer diligently. That's mm. what Jesus said. Mm. The weapons of righteousness are the fruit of the Spirit. Which we discussed last time that when we talk about Holy Spirit power, we should understand what is the work of the Holy Ghost in our life. We have to talk about it. Otherwise, we will never understand the beatitude. What is the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of everybody? I'm not talking about ministry. I'm talking about every single believer in Christ. Well, the Holy Spirit comes into our heart with the aim of creating a godly character. Absolutely. When the Spirit of God comes, it brings the nature of Christ. When we accept mm. Jesus, we accept the nature of Christ. When we are partaker of his divine holiness, mm. which is God's character. The word of God reflects his character. Mm. That's why the Bible says, what are the things that are pure in Philippians? What are the things that are true and praiseworthy? Think about such things. Mm. Jesus is the new man. How do you put on the new man? We put on the new man when you think, speak, and act as Christ would have acted. Mm. He's our standard. So today we're talking about the beatitude. We see Jesus clearly through the beatitude. God gave us the fruit of the Spirit to tell Christian, these are the fruit of righteousness that we know. His nature, his character is portrayed by this beatitude clearly. So we are going to talk about this beatitude. 
if I'm a Christian, only my character in Christ can testify to my confession of mm. Christ. If I call myself a Christian, do people see Christ-likeness in me? In the way I respond to situation, in the way I behave in the midst of the community I live. Remember, Jesus said, you are the salt of civilization. That's what he said. What is the salt? What's the difference? Christ's character. Jesus has come to bring a standard of perfection, whether we like it or not. The standard of perfect obedience has been revealed through Christ. He obeyed Philippians chapter 2 to death at the cross. Mm. He knew that the scriptures had to be fulfilled for us to be saved. He knew what the scriptures said in Isaiah chapter 4, 53 that he is going to suffer. Mm. He knew by the prophecy of David in Psalm 22 that he will be pierced. He knew that. And he told his disciples before it happened. He came to fulfill the scripture, obeying obedience to death. That's why the gift of righteousness came to us. We know that Adam disobeyed and death came. Jesus obeyed perfectly and righteousness came. Justification by faith came. That's what Christianity is all about. Righteousness. This Bible we are talking about is no storybook. The main underlying truth in this Holy Bible is a gift of righteousness. I mean, right standing with God. Mm. By grace, through faith. Now, we're going to talk about this beatitude and today, we want to start to refresh our mind, to reset our mind. Because the Bible warns me, Rasin, we, all of us, in the book of 2 Corinthians, Chapter 13, verse 5. We are going to read it before we start. 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5. And that's the duty of every one of us. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Hmm. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. Can you say it again? Let's everybody listen to me talk to you. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the Examine faith. Examine yourself. What does it mean? Check your heart. Mm. Check your heart through the mirror of the word of God. Test yourselves. Mm -hmm. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. Is Christ living in you? If Christ living in you, you will say what Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Jesus. Mm. It is no longer I who lives my flesh. But Christ who lives Christ in me. Christ lives in me. The life I live in this flesh, I live by faith in the, the Son, Son of, of God. God. That's what Paul said. Mm. As Christ was our substitute unto death at the cross, so is Christ by his resurrection, substitute in newness of life. Today, we live in Him. We move in Him by the Spirit of life. That's why He said to everybody in Matthew chapter 7, verse 20 to 23, you have to be careful. By the fruit, you shall be known. Mm. That's what the Lord said. We should examine ourselves. Are we in the faith? What is faith? Faith makes us one with Jesus. Our unity identification with Christ is by faith. Mm. For we live by faith when we recognize our union with Jesus Christ in the Spirit. I repeat again. We live by faith through the gift of righteousness. Because God said, my righteousness live by faith, right? Mm. We live by faith when we recognize our union, righteousness, in Christ. Anytime we see the Bible in Christ, we are still here. We live by faith when we recognize, oh my Lord, are we union with Jesus Christ in the spirit? If we're living in unity with Christ, like a branch grafted, we should bear the fruit of Christ, the fruit of the spirit. We should examine our heart, examine our deed, examine ourselves in the light of God's word. Mm. Are we mirroring Christ? Are we bearing the fruit of Christ? 
It is in the midst of adversity. That's the test the Bible is talking about. It's in the midst of community that the nature of God in us is truly exposed and revealed in spirit and in truth. When Jesus faced adversities, we saw how he responded in righteousness. That's why he never committed sin. Never. His answer was always wisdom. His answer was always in line with the word of God. Mm. He never fought back. He never cursed anybody. He blessed and released for forgiveness. And when the truth was ignored, he was silent. Absolutely. But when people were hungry for righteousness, he spoke for hours. This is the Christ we say we identify self with. This is the Christ the Bible says we should mirror. Christianity is a lifestyle. It's not a hobby. Let's examine ourselves in the light of God's word. They are going through the battle today. Jesus was speaking to everybody. Having the Holy Spirit is not because of the minister, but because of a child of God. It is the virtues, the deep, deep virtues of Christian character. We're speaking to everybody. We're going to take one today. The first one. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm. For theirs is what? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, you know, uh, here at the University of God, one of our passions is just to bring the word of God alive. And by the grace of God, um, with the team of the UOG, we actually just did a short reenactment of those words that we read for you just now, those famous words that resonate all over the world to this day, um, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. So right now, let's join the team for this little production. Stay blessed. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We are going to talk about this Beatitude in God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs belong the kingdom of heaven. 
Jesus, when he came on earth and he started his ministry, he said, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. John the Baptist started first and began all of a sudden to preach a message of repentance to mm. all the people of Israel. Mm. He said, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. I am the one sent to prepare the way of the Lord. And people were coming all over the area. Mm. And, the, and the Bible says, many came to him, repented, confessing their sins, and to be baptized by John. These are the poor in spirit. Mm. Those who recognize their need for God. Those who recognize their weaknesses. So it's not financial poverty. It's not financial poverty at all. It has nothing to do with that. It's not financial poverty. If I realize how much I need God, I run to Him. I depend on Him. Mm. We are talking about the things of the Spirit. We are all weak when it comes to the things of the Spirit. We say Christ now that is perfection. This is things of the Spirit. Mm. Worshiping God requires a standard of purity of heart and mind. Mm. That's things of the Spirit. Because Jesus said, it must be done in spirit and in truth. Mm. We you must be led by the Holy Spirit in everything in our lives. So you mean to be poor in spirit is seeking the kingdom of God? Absolutely. Knowing that you, you need God in your life. Will you seek the kingdom of God if you don't see any need for it? No. Will you seek salvation if you don't know even the meaning of salvation? Mm. When Jesus came, they will say to him, ah, the, the teachers of the law, why are you going to the bar? Why are you going to the coffee shop? You talk with people about you hear about it. All the sorts of accusations. Jesus said, I did not come for the righteous. I came for the unrighteous. Mm -hmm. It is not the, the people that have good health, they need a doctor. But those who are sick. Sick. Compassion and mercy. Jesus gave for that, a change of heart. They didn't understand, and they opposed it. They opposed his message. When Job spoke, some of them did not see any need of repentance and began to challenge John the Baptist. But those who are poor in spirit, those who have discovered themselves the need for God, came with penitent heart, repentant heart, for the kingdom of heaven. So this means the poor in spirit has discovered himself first before he discovered God. He has discovered his need. If I woke up with a headache, ah, I have a headache. And I go to see my doctor. I say, doctor, I'm having a headache. The doctor will listen to me and I begin to expose all the symptoms I am experiencing. Mm. As a professional, going by what I confess to him, he will diagnose or identify the source of my problem based on his practice and knowledge he will give me treatment that's what he does jesus came for the special healing of the heart of human beings of our spirit that's what he said when jesus came he realizes the greatest trouble we have is the human heart so when he came with spiritual messages, they did not understand what he was saying. Mm. But those who are poor in spirit, those who, who realize the state of their heart, those who realize their weaknesses, will run to him. That's why thousands were coming for him every day. Physical problem, emotional problem, spiritual problem, he attended to everybody. Mm. So a poor in spirit is someone who see the need of having the gift of righteousness because we have two righteousness. We have self-righteousness. When we think, we know everything. When we are much of ourselves, mm. we think we don't need anything. Hmm. And that's the problem we face. Mm. When we begin now to concentrate on ourselves, on our own ability, on our own strength, whether spiritual or mental or whatever, what happens? We begin to 
concentrate on how we are treated by others, how we are doing, how people respond to act of goodness. If I do good to somebody, I'm expecting him to say thank you. If the person does not thank me, I will not do anything. Okay. We measure ourselves by ourselves and we begin to fall into the trap of walking in the flesh, no longer in the spirit, no longer in harmony with the leading of the Holy Spirit, because his ways are contrary to man's way. I want to give you a single example that will portray this. Let's take the case of Job. An example speaks very well. Hmm. Let's go to the book of Job chapter 1. And we see what happened to Job. Job was not a poor person. He was a wealthy person. Well established in society. Honored and respected by everyone. He was the leader, an elder. People came to pay him respect. He was very rich. Very. A noble person. But you can see that when we read Job chapter 1, that he was a God-fearing person. And the scriptures were saying he was offering sacrifice to God because they say, hey, maybe my children have sinned against God. He was always having that repentant, penitent spirit before God in the midst of blessings. Hmm. And we can see for the poor in spirit, his faith is not based on the blessings, never. Because he sees God as his source. The poor spirit always, always tap on God's resources. So he was rich, but his attitude has shown how humble he was towards God as his source. He didn't want to offend God for anything. Now, we have an enemy, the adversary. And the Bible quotes in the book of Job, in Job chapter 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, mm -hmm. and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you Thank to your face. You. Of that. That's the strategy of Satan. He's simply saying, they say they are Christian, they say mm. they believe in you, mm. but they believe in you if only based Mm. on what they can get from you, blessings, money, whatever, that's stated for you. Mm. You say, it's easier for Job to do this because he's rich, he's protected, he has everything. Mm. So his faith is not on you, on what you what, what he can get from you. That is it. The poor in spirit recognizes God as his source. Whether he is blessed or not, God remains his source. Mm. Whether he is healed or whether he is sick, his faith in God remains. God still remains his God. His faith in God mm. is not determined by the circumstances. Means his faith in God is not for selfish, classic, and material reason, but for God's sake, for heaven's sake. Mm. Our faith should be for eternal life. That's why Jesus said, don't seek what to wear, what to eat. Seek the mm. kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is his word. That's what he said. He even warn us. Why are you asking for this? The Gentile look for it. But your father knows your need. Seek mm. first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm. That's what the Bible is all sort of about. That's what the gospel we believe is all sort of about. Christ's standard of faith is that of a poor in spirit. Jesus, in his life on earth, was in complete intimate union with the Father. He never did anything of his own. Before choosing his twelve, he went to the solitary place to pray for guidance. He but knew he needed God. Absolutely. What is strange is that we are the ones that need God. 
but he behaved as if he needed to go to more than any of us here. Mm. He never did anything that prayed to the Father. Mm. When he came to the graveside of Lazarus, what did he do first? Mm. He really prayed to the Father. Father, I thank you for you always hear me. You mm. always hear me. What is Jesus saying to the believers? He who believes in me, the works I do, he will do. But how? He said, if you abide in my word, and my word abided you. That's the key of righteousness. Our union with Jesus is through his word, by his spirit. Hmm. Christ lives in me through his word, by his spirit. Our unity with him is by faith in his word. That faith makes us one with him by the gift of righteousness when we are sealed by the Holy Ghost, by his internal presence in our heart, in our life. So our faith is based on Christ himself and everlasting life. So the enemy uses situations always, always to bring people to put their faith on the outside, on the blessings, on the natural. Because I say it's a kind of spirit. He always wants to shift your attention from the spirit to the natural. Mm. While Jesus wants the opposite, from the natural to the spirit. These are the way of the conflict of the spirit we mentioned. He wants to create a battlefield to take you from the spirit to the natural. Mm. And the believer who operates in that natural will have no strength. You don't have any mental strength, any physical strength to fight Satan. No, it's going to only be stopped by Christ. I call it a representative combat. It's Jesus that fight the battle, not you. It's a spiritual battle. No human beings. Are, they don't fight human beings. Mm. Our faith is in Christ. That's why Job refused to, to the temptation to look at his position that were lost and to begin to blame God. He never blamed God. Never. In one day, the scriptures say, he lost everything he had. Mm. The rich become a poor, absolute poor person. <laughs> he lost his cattle, he lost his properties, he lost his house, and to crown it all, he lost all his children at the same day. Mm. Everything that society portrays as high status in society, he lost it. If somebody appears to lost his job, he lost everything, you find yourself alone? Nothing. But what did he say? God has given me, God has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His mm. faith has never been on the creative things. Mm. His faith has never been on blessings. His faith has been on God himself, his source. He knew that. Mm. And that's the victory he had against Satan. The victory is not a natural victory, it's a spiritual victory. What does he want? It wants you to see God in a bad light. He wants you to cut your relationship with God, your dependence on God, and portrays God as unfaithful. Mm. That's just a second for you. To attack the center of your faith and to disconnect you from God and say, eh. That's why every negative situation, they want to attribute it to God. If God is my this, why this, why this, why this? That's his strategy and tactics. We know that. When he destroyed everything, Job remained faithful. And now he went to another strategy. He afflicted Job with a terrible sickness. We don't know where the sickness is, but the Bible says we're having sores all over. And this, the sickness was so terrible that he was isolated. Now, the man who was the center <laughs> of his own world became isolated, rejected, sick, and everybody despised him. Everybody rejected him. Everybody. Mm. Job, even though, never, never, never rejected God. He said, I know, Job 23, verse 12. I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. Mm -hmm. I have treasured the words of his mouth mm -hmm. more than my necessary food. Hmm. Did you hear that? I have treasured his word more than my necessary food. May he remain faithful to God's word mm. in faith. Could you verse that? But he knows the way that I take. Mm -hmm. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Hallelujah. You hear that? He saw his situation as a test of faith. Mm. 
God can allow any situation to test our heart, our faith, so we can examine ourselves. Which base is our faith today? What do we believe? Whom do we believe? What makes us a Christian? That circumstances reveal truly the nature of the faith of Job. He was truly a man of faith. Faith in God. That's the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit will never, never, never rely on himself. But total dependency on God. His situation always creates a sense of dependency on God. His situation, he never look at it on the ordinary, on the outside and the ordinary. He sees it as extraordinary. What do I mean by that? When the situation comes, he run to God the more. He prayed the more. He read the scripture the more. Because no only God can see him through that path. Mm. That's why we said in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all, all things, things through Christ, Christ who strengthens, who strengthens me. me. All things that would otherwise be impossible for you naturally, you can do it through Christ's strength. That is it. If you are poor in spirit, you will see the need to walk in the spirit. You will see the need of having the Holy Ghost strength to do what is right in the sight of God. You will refrain yourself from speaking what you're supposed to do. That's how you put on the new mind, Ephesians chapter 4. Hmm? So it means it's, it's a narrow way. It's a narrow way. Hmm. Thank you for reminding me. When Jesus is carrying your cross and follow me, self-denial is a narrow way. The flesh cannot go there. Mm. You can only go there by walking in the spirit. Mm. Self-denial is a narrow way. Mm. Our natural pride and arrogance cannot go there. It's a path of faith and humility. Only faith can go that way. Total dependence on God for everything. You meet and faith. They go together. When the heroes of faith faced tribulation, what did they do? They, they said, Lord. They gave themselves to prayer. To prayer. In Acts chapter 4, the Lord, yeah. stretch forth your head. Give us strength. Give us bonus to speak on your behalf. That's the strength of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Ghost, it gives supernatural strength to be able to love as Christ would have loved. We saw a big difference between Peter when the situation came and was afraid and he denied Jesus three times and the Peter that stood at the day of Pentecost, a completely different person. Out of what he was the same. So what was the difference? The Holy Spirit in his heart? The Holy Spirit in his heart. Mm -hmm. Righteousness has come. You know, it's true. If you look at the way the disciples behaved around Jesus during his earthly mission, those three years, you know, many times they, they just didn't understand what he was doing, what he was saying. They, resp they responded naturally. They fought amongst themselves. They, they, they didn't understand so many things. Um, they even struggled with fear, with, with, with rivalry, different, different human weaknesses. But it's true. If you look at the, the disciples that became the pillar of the church, the, the apostles upon which Jesus built the church when Jesus ascended to heaven. He left the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And when you see in Pentecost, the boldness, the, the, the love, the strength they had in their lives, that can only be as a res result of the Holy Spirit in their lives, bringing Christ's character. So when we talk about Holy Spirit in us, it's not about just power for healing we're talking about. Mm. It's power of righteousness. He will empower you with divine strength to be able to forgive your enemy. Human being cannot forgive. Mm -hmm. Flesh cannot forgive. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of righteousness to be able to do so. Act chapter 7, Stephen, mm -hmm. when he was facing it, mm -hmm. he said, Father, don't be put that sin to them. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost. When he said, Father, when you are filled with the love of Christ, Romans chapter 5 verse 5 said, it is the Holy Ghost that poured that love into us. Mm. unconditional love it is supernatural human being cannot do that that's why we see the need of the Holy Ghost a poor in spirit see the need of the Holy Spirit without him we fall without him we fail human spirit fails to do what is right unless the Holy Ghost fills it when the power of the Holy Ghost comes 
the fruit will begin to come. The fruit of the Spirit. That's why God is waiting for every one of us at the point of the Spirit of God. Mm. At the point of the fruit of the Spirit. It's mm. a warning to all of us. And Jesus said, many will come and say, Lord, we have prophesied, we have done this. But by the fruit, we shall know them. Those fruits are the fruit of the Spirit, the character of Christ. Let's look at the life of Paul. Look at the life of the heroes of faith that, that lived before us, how they responded to the situation they faced. It's a temptation to act on the outside. Job never did. He said, God has given me, God has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he put Satan to shame, defeats them in the spirit by the word of God. When they tempted Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus always responded by the word of God. And that's the weapon of righteousness. Offensive weapon of righteousness is the word of the living God. When they accuse you, when they say all sorts of things, the defense you're going to have is the fruit of the Spirit. It's time for us to examine our lives. You know, there's nothing more dangerous than a person with an unexamined life. Absolutely. So when we take our time to examine our life in the light of what Jesus taught us, you know, if we're Christians, let's be Christians. And how do we do that? By following this teaching of Jesus. And the only way to follow it is with the help of the Holy Spirit, because it's impossible naturally to say no to unrighteousness and yes to righteousness without the help of the Holy Spirit. For you to be poor in spirit, yours is the kingdom of heaven. We desire to have the kingdom of heaven, to possess the kingdom of heaven. The only way we can do that is if we follow Jesus' words, to be poor in spirit. Therefore, we're learning here in this discussion, in this podcast, that poor in spirit means to know that you need the kingdom of God, to know that you need God's sufficiency, that without him you're nothing. You walk in the spirit, led by the spirit of God. Not your own way, God's way, not on your will, God's will. And you can see that poverty in spirit has nothing to do with wealth or lack of money. Mm. Abraham was wealthy, or not by God, but Abraham's lifestyle showed he was a poor in spirit. He never put anything above God in his life. When God blessed him with Isaac, <laughs> God tested the faith of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. Mm. God will test your blessing to know whether your heart is after the blessing or after him. When he's saying, this is your child whom you love, your only begotten child, go offer to me as a sacrifice. God never, never for a second had a mind to, of human sacrifice. Never. He abhorred it. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to test the faith of Abraham. If Abraham's faith who has been waiting desperately all his lifetime to have a child, mm. was on the child and said, God, I know, I can't do this. This is a child you promised me. How can you ask me to do this? It is contrary to what you promised me. He never said that. Never. The scriptures only say, you woke up in the morning in full obedience. Why? Because Abraham is born in spirit. He knew that that child can never come to him without God's miracle of power of grace. Mm. When Isaac asked him, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? He said, God will provide. Mm. The Lord will provide. Mm. <laughs> if you know that God will provide for your needs in all areas, you will live a contented life based on God. The poor in spirit always live a contented life, rely on God's goodness in his life. Abraham obeyed. And the real purpose of God will be God say, Ha, I've seen your heart. You have not withheld the blessing of your son. Because of this, I swear, all the nations of Israel will be blessed because you obeyed me. Genesis mm. 22. And those blessings that can be trust today, the blessing of the Holy Ghost, the blessing of righteousness, that's what we trust today because of obedience. The question is, bless are the poor in spirit. We should remember that to follow Jesus is to carry your cross. Which cross I'm carrying? This is my cross, this body. This body is my cross. With its natural this tendencies. Baby, this cross will tell me, go and sleep. Oh, I want to pray. Mm. 
when when offense comes, this boy say, react. I have to take my body, but I need to go to pray. Emotional reaction can disparage me. The way of my flesh is different from the way of the Spirit of God. Hmm. So it's the path of self denial choosing to do God's will rather than your own will. And that can only happen when you run to God for strength. Hmm. When the Holy Ghost comes, He's the only means of growth in our Christian life. The Holy Spirit is the only means of growth in our spiritual life. Remember, we all said that physical growth is a function of time. As time goes on, we grow physically. Intellectual growth is a function of what? Learning. Learning. We learn to go to university, we study, we learn. But spiritual growth is a function of obedience to God. Mm. In the midst of hard times as well. Anytime you choose to do what is right, something from God will strengthen your faith. Mm. That's righteousness. Every day we learn to die to sin more and more and to live for righteousness more and more. It is a daily thing. Process. And all of this makes our relationship with Jesus more valuable. Absolutely. You saw we talked about the difference between Peter before and Peter after. Mm. The same difference between Saul and Paul. We all know how Saul was ferociously against Christian. We know. But go and read the book of Philemon. Oh my Lord, you see purity of love, compassion, intercession for a slave. We act conversion to Christ is once where we said it takes a lifestyle to be like Jesus. Mm, Christ likeness is forever. We learn to die to our weakness every day. We learn to do what is right every day. In every situation, God is humbling us to learn. But are we willing to learn? The choice is ours. God said, I've said before you, life and death. It doesn't know me. Choose life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. My way is narrow. Broad is the way. What is a broad way? Ah, the way of my feelings are fresh. That's anybody can react. Anybody. <laughs> it's the easiest thing to do. That's what the Bible warns in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. That is it then what seems right in common sense? The flesh said it for that seems right. But that's not the way of Christ. The way of the spirit is different from the way of the flesh. So what will happen when situation comes to our lives as Christians? What do we do? We have to go in prayer, ask God for wisdom. Ask God for direction in order to think it diligently and react diligently without falling into the temptation to sin against Jesus. That is God's way. Hmm. God knows life is not easy for anybody. He knows that. And Jesus tells him, you this world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. Don't lose heart. Hmm. And that's the purpose of faith. Faith walks in conjunction with other spiritual forces of love, the fruit of the Spirit. You can't separate faith from this. The first time I read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I was shocked. I couldn't understand. Can you read first? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's read from verse 1 to verse 6. It took me time and years to understand what Paul was saying. I said, what he's asking to do is impossible for human beings to do. Hmm. What did he say? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Mm -hmm. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. <laughs> love suffers long. Sorry. Listen, now we are talking now. When they, God just opened my heart to the scripture. All these gifts of the Spirit we mentioned in the book of First Corinthians chapter 12, prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, healing, all this stuff, all as God. But it works with the love of God. Those gifts are exercised as the Spirit of God leads and wills. Love is the fruit of the Spirit. Romans 5, chapter 5, they said, said that love is poured in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It means if I do this, without having the gift of righteousness, without being born of the Spirit, the character of Christ, I am nothing. That's why Jesus said, 
Then the, the other prophet said, I don't know you who practice righteousness. What remains? You see, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest is what? Love. What is love? It's God. It's Holy Spirit who produces that love. It's everlasting life. That one remains forever. That's why it's the greatest. That's the greatest. You see, in John 14, verse 16, you will be saved with the Holy Ghost who will abide with you forever. By their fruit, you will know them. By their love, you will know them. And Paul said, the most excellent gift. That's what he said. Mm. Pursue the most excellent gift. Can you go to First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1? Pursue about... love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may... Oh, my Lord. You see, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Huh. Spiritual gift as it power, healing power. Like, but you pursue love and desire. The gifts are very good, but pursue love. Love remains. What belongs to you, what will outlive you is love. Love beyond the grave. Let's 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 read those yeah. qualities of love. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself is not puffed up, mm. does not behave rudely, mm. does not seek its own, mm. is not provoked, oh thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. I wanted to read it again slowly, but sweet. I'm listening to it. Thank you very much. Read it again. Love suffers long. Love suffers long. Fruit of the Spirit. Long suffering. And is kind. Kindness. Fruit of the Spirit. Love does not envy. It does not envy. Not self-centered. Love does not parade itself. It does not praise. It does not boast in itself. Is not puffed up. Poor spirit. Not puffed up. It's not prideful. Really. Does not behave rudely. It does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Self-controlled. Oh my God. The fruit of the spirit. Everything winds down to the same fruit of the spirit. If I now the question is, what is the evidence of salvation and righteousness? Ephesians chapter 2. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. From verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for Which his God. good That's pleasure. The Holy Spirit that works in you to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Hmm. Holy Ghost works through you to do miracle and for to do it. It is hmm. manifested as he wills to hmm. produce love, to produce this thing in our heart. Without him, we have nothing. Hmm. That's the seal of righteousness that only God sees. The only evidence we can see is the way we respond to situation of character, humility. We are known by it. So you can understand that now the time has, why Jesus was saying, seek first my kingdom and his righteousness. Let your faith be centered in everlasting life, in eternal life, in life after life. Mm. Now I understand that word, to seek the kingdom of God is to have the kingdom of God because blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Meaning if you're poor in spirit, you know you're, you're seeking the kingdom of God. You don't, and as long as you keep seeking it in every moment, in every thought, in every word, in every motivation of your heart, if you're seeking that kingdom, that means you have the kingdom. The poor in spirit is the one who realizes the need for everlasting life. Mm. If you give me a cup of water, if I'm not thirsty, I will not drink it. But if I'm thirsty, I will take it. If you give me food, I'm not hungry, I will not eat your food. But if I'm hungry, I will eat. Blessed are those the first and hunger for righteousness. They shall be filled. So, brothers and sisters, believers all over the world, the Bible says, my righteous son live by faith. Our faith is being challenged in a unique way by the situations or circumstances of life. But Jesus knew that. He never promised to keep us away from it. Never. John chapter 16, 33 is very clear about it. But he said, I will bless you in the midst of persecution hmm. and troubles. So now, what is the way out? The way out is to remain, to remain in faith. Do not allow circumstances behind the scene to rob you of your peace in Christ, of your faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Our faith should be anchored in Christ with the fruit of the Spirit. We should pray and ask for strength as people do. 
if you find it difficult to do what is right in the sight of God and difficult for the flesh, you pray for it. That's what he did. That's the purpose of running to God for prayer. They ran to God for prayer. You saw what Daniel happened, happened to Daniel. He went to God to pray for strength. It's God that saw there through whatever life brings. And God promised to give you grace, whatever life brings. Love is great. The time has come that we should examine ourselves in the light of God's word and the Bible be so much you believe. And ask Holy Ghost to give us strength. So the poor in spirit learn to exchange his natural strength with God's strength. Because hmm. our natural strength is as perfect weakness. That's why God never asks you to fight the battle. If you fight in the natural, God will lead you to your own battle. Hmm. But if the poor in spirit rely on God's strength, in righteousness and truth, that's what God said. So you pray for everyone. It's your opportunity to pray because the scripture says that we have no strength of our own, no power of our own, and we are all weak vessels. So we have to pray for everybody, and for the body of Christ, that the Lord will manifest his strength in our weakness. Hmm. Paul said in the book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, I came to you with much trembling and weakness and fear, hmm. but with the demonstration of the spirit power. Hmm. And we saw in his life a big difference. The difference between Saul and Paul was righteousness of God. In hmm. Christ Jesus, you're fruit of the spirit. So I pray. Hmm. Lord, we stand in your name to pray. Jesus, we pray, fill us with your love and power. Give us the strength by your spirit to stand in faith. Strengthen our faith, Lord. Give us the grace, the strength to think right, to speak right, and to act right. Lead us to love. Lead us to kindness. Lead us to faithfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, this is a journey through the Beatitudes. So as we saw um, in that UOG production there, it's going to be a journey. We Today we looked at the first one, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We take another one, step by step, as the Spirit leads. So please, you can watch this over and over again. Write down anything which touches your heart, because the Word of God is life. And this word of God is what we need. It's what you need. And remember, as we're followers and disciples of Jesus Christ, our aim and desire is for his lifestyle, for his character to be in us. And that is only possible through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. The Lord be with your spirit. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.